The plot begins when a man called John Kramer is diagnosed with cancer. The doctor informed John that he only had a few months before he died. During his visit to the hospital, he saw a hospital staff member who was tempted to steal from a patient. John can already see himself torturing the young man. This includes strapping him onto a lethal chair that will not only cut his hand, but also suck his eyeballs. Back to reality, the worker decided not to steal, and as a result, John told him, good choice. While John was preparing his last will and testament, he met a man named Henry Kessler. John is overjoyed to see the man, whom he met through a cancer support group. John became intrigued by seeing Henry, who has stage 4 pancreatic cancer, looking so much better. Henry then went into depth about the doctor who helped him beat cancer. Later that night, John conducted some research on a doctor named Finn Pedersen. He then sent them an email with his medical information. The next day, John receives a call from Cecilia Pedersen, the daughter of Finn Pedersen, who informs him that she is screening potential applicants for their program and that John is eligible to undergo the treatment. Cecilia then provides John with her whereabouts. John traveled to Mexico to meet Cecilia a few weeks later. He then meets Diego, John's cab driver. However, before he arrives at the specific site, someone ambushes the cab in which he is riding, and he later discovers that it was Cecilia. She stated that they must use greater caution because the government does not permit this type of treatment. After that, he met a girl named Gabriela, who assisted him with his luggage. She led John to his room and informed him that the Pedersen Project had saved her life. John eventually met Cecilia, who took him on a tour of the entire facility. John then meets a young boy named Carlos, who enjoys playing football. He is the facility's caretaker's son. The two then proceeded to explore the entire area until they arrived at the infirmary, where John met a man named Mateo. He welcomed John into the hospital, and he's going to give anesthesia for John's surgery. John also meets a woman named Valentina, who is in charge of taking scans and drawing blood. John met Cecilia's patient, named Parker Sears, who has now completely recovered from the Peterson therapy. John responded that he is a civil engineer when Cecilia inquired about his line of work. He also claimed that he has a few interests, but he didn't specify that one of them is torturing people to death. The sound of a little boy fixing his bike woke John up. John assisted the boy in repairing his bike, but the boy did not understand English. Despite this, John was still able to assist the boy in repairing his bike. The following day, we see John dressed in a hospital gown. He asks Cecilia who will be performing the surgery and she says Dr. Ramon Cortez. Dr. Cortez is beginning to administer the Pedersen treatment to John in the following scene. He then performed an awake craniotomy on John, and we can see that he goes in and out of consciousness. The doctor shaved John's head, and he could see his open head on the monitor. They then sedated John. In the following scene, Cecilia informed John that the surgery went well and that his hemoglobin levels were normal. Cecilia stated that John is now completely healed. He then stated that he would send the second payment to Cecilia. John was disappointed that he couldn't say goodbye to Gabriela. John is in a park sketching with a machine when he decides to crumble his drawing. John returns to Mexico to see Gabriela, but the entire place is in a mess. It appears that someone entered the building and damaged it. John initially suspects the government. He then walks around and sees that the entire Pedersen treatment was a sham and that they did not perform an awake craniotomy on him. When John removed the bandage, he revealed that his surgery was a hoax. There are no wounds in his head. There is nothing but a bandage. They are simply deceiving cancer patients. They had no idea that John's philosophy is that those who damage and harm others do not deserve to live a fruitful life themselves and must be stopped at all costs. As a result, he creates murder machines and traps in which his victims must mutilate themselves or die. He decided to continue practicing his philosophy in life before he died to teach Cecilia and her team a lesson. John then made some phone calls to a detective to find all of the people involved in the Pedersen treatment and make them pay for their actions. John then first visits his cab driver, Diego, after realizing that he pretended to be Dr. Cortez in his operation. He then put Diego to sleep, and when he woke up, he was now John's hostage. He needs to play John's game in order for him to live. He was screaming and telling John that he was willing to provide all the information that he needed. Diego was able to get 
out of John's tie with the help of the blade in his hand. John said that there were two bombs in both of his arms. He told Diego that he should think that the explosives were like cancer, a malignancy that had to be removed in order for him to live. John said that the blades cannot penetrate galvanized cables, but they can cut flesh and muscles that will allow Diego to cut the cancer, or rather, the two explosive devices in his hand. John told Diego that whether he lives or dies is his choice. The bomb timer has started. Diego started to remove the bomb from his left hand, using the blade in his hand, and he only had two minutes to do it. Diego was able to remove the bombs and survive the game. John gave him an emergency kit, telling him that he's going to be okay. John called a detective, telling him that he had to find the people who needed their services. Valentina was having fun in a bar and got into a car with a man. The guy started to take advantage of her. Fortunately, someone saved her, but she didn't see who it was, not knowing that it was Amanda who later that night attacked her and abducted her. Gabriella went to a clinic, handing money to a man named Matteo. In return, Matteo handed her some pills. While Matteo was walking inside the clinic, something suddenly appeared behind him, and he was electrocuted. While Gabriella was inside the cubicle, someone attacked her and sprayed something on her, making her lose consciousness. In the next scene, we can see Cecilia talking to someone named Margaret, who is her next victim after John. Cecilia seems to feel that someone is watching her. That's why she goes around her house and says that she has a gun. Cecilia looked at her house on the CCTV monitor when she saw that there was someone on her rooftop, and she smashed her roof. She got scared, went outside, and ran to her car, not knowing that John was already waiting for her. John injected her, making her lose consciousness. When the whole team that had scammed John woke up, they pleaded with John not to hurt them. John then asked Valentina if his blood actually reached the laboratory or if she had flushed it down somewhere. Matteo started begging John, and he said that they had nothing to do with him, and he was just following Cecilia's order. Matteo apologized for what they did to John. In the next scene, Gabriella told John that she meant no harm to John, even if John wanted to believe her. But it was too late. This is where John said that she still has a chance to prove herself. Gabriella cries after talking to John. After John talked to Gabriella, he started talking to Valentina to start the game he made. He told them that the first player was going to be Valentina, and that the key to her freedom was inside the box. John said it was a giggly saw. It was used by surgeons to cut bone. Valentina found out that there was no key, but a giggly saw. In order for Valentina to win the game, she needs to listen carefully to John's rules. In the next scene, John hits a machine where Valentina is sitting, and he told Amanda to start the game. Before John left, he started telling the first player what she should do to win the game. Amanda has already pressed the machine, and it is called the Giggly Saw. We can see that Valentina's legs have dotted marks, and she will have to cut them. If she doesn't do it, the wire saw on her neck will cut her neck. She tried to follow John's instructions, but unfortunately, she did not succeed, and it can be seen that his neck was cut in the end. John stated that what they are doing is the worst. They all promised people who were about to die that they still had a chance, but they only fooled people to earn money from their hopelessness. John has the list of people they scam. In eight years, they cheated 34 people. John found out that their group had earned $34 million. John told Cecilia that he had all her money upstairs. Amanda seems to be trying to save Gabriella after learning that she's a drug addict. She is begging John not to do his plan for her, but John says that he is helping them that this is not retribution, and that what he is doing is a reawakening. John and Amanda were upstairs when the team heard the phone ring. They couldn't get it because they were tied up, so they used Valentina's intestines and were able to get the cell phone that was on the table. Cecilia made a phone call, but before she could speak, Amanda immediately saw the cell phone and took it from her. In the next scene, we see a man from the CCTV monitor disappearing. And this is Parker Sears, who was one of Cecilia's patients. Parker was banging on the door, trying to get inside and find Cecilia. When he was inside, he shot someone, and it was the body of Valentina. Parker did not notice the presence of Amanda, and she hit him in the head with a gun, causing him to lose his consciousness. Parker woke up, and he saw John and Amanda. Parker then asked why they tied him, and then proceeded to tell them he was only here to get his money from Cecilia. 
John then promised Amanda that, one way or another, it's all going to work out according to plan. In order for Amanda to agree with John's plan on releasing Parker, she wanted to let Matteo play the game and try to buy some time for Gabriella. Amanda then proceeded to electrocute Matteo, causing him to pass out. When Matteo woke up, he was tied to an electric chair. The rules of the game are that he had to operate on his head to remove the piece of his brain, but he did not have any anesthesia to do what he tried to remove in the gray matter in his brain, which he did not do, which caused his head to be electrocuted in the chair and caused his death. After watching the whole scene, Parker said that the two were mentally sick. It can be seen that Amanda is still hoping that Cecilia's father might save John, but he said that he hopes that she will continue what they are doing. Amanda cried and hugged John. John asked Amanda to release Parker, and she did exactly what he asked. Gabriella was the next one to play. It can be seen that she didn't want to play, but she played anyway and followed John's rules, and she won the game. Gabriella needed to be taken to the hospital as soon as possible. Unfortunately, Parker suddenly pointed a gun at John and Amanda and made them go down. We can see that Parker pretends that he is a victim of Cecilia, but in fact, the two are in a relationship. Parker and Cecilia made John and Amanda play the game. Amanda was not satisfied yet when she saw the little boy named Carlos. She goes to him and brings him inside, where John and Amanda are. John tells Cecilia that he needs to take Gabriella to the hospital because of the injuries she suffered in the game, but she doesn't take Gabriella to the hospital. Instead, she kills Gabriella, which makes Amanda angry. That we can see that even before the game happened, she really wanted to save Gabriella's life. John begged not to include Carlos because he was innocent, but Cecilia ignored him. Instead, she included Carlos in the game, and his opponent was John. John and Carlos play the game. After seeing the suffering of the two, they went upstairs to get the money. When they were about to get the money from the bag, suddenly the alarm went off and all the lights turned red. The two did not know that it was all part of John and Amanda's plan. When they removed the bag from the cabinet, the John and Carlos game stopped spontaneously. What they didn't know was that the two had a spare key, so they removed themselves from the game. Cecilia and Parker couldn't get out of the room, and every time they touched the doorknob, it got hot. Suddenly there was smoke in the room. But it's not just smoke, it causes skin burns. And it's one of John's games. Cecilia and Parker have to choose who will live between the two of them, because there is only one vent they can put their heads in. Cecilia managed to survive the game. She keeps asking John to help her, but he does not listen to her. In the end, it can be seen that John gave the money to Carlos, and he and Amanda left the facility together. 